one of the very interesting things is trying to figure out how stem cells mediate their therapeutic effects in conditions such as multiple sclerosis. So, if you were to ask me, Tom, how do stem cells work? Um, I would say, in general, there's three main ways in multiple sclerosis. One, obviously, is the stem cells can differentiate into different things such as neurons and oligodendrocytes and also help rebuild up the myelin sheath directly. The second way is the stem cells can produce different growth factors that help the body's own processes, accelerate the body's own processes to induce healing. And we know this because, for example, in relapse remitting MS in the remitting phases, it's published data showing that there's endogenous neurogenesis going on, which is dependent on different growth factors, which when you give exogenous stem cells, they may help that process. The third one, uh, it's probably the most interesting to me as an immunologist, is the um, immune modulation by which stem cells shut down the immune system against that's fighting itself or that's fighting the myelin sheath and MS. So, we're going to talk about a publication that deals with the last one. It deals with immune modulation by stem cells in the mouse model of multiple sclerosis. You induce multiple sclerosis in a mouse. It's called experimental allergic encephalomyelitis. Basically, you inject the mice, you immunize them with a component of the myelin sheath for this publication, they use proteolipid protein, PLP. And then what happens is there's a progressive disease. Um, starts off with, it's, it's measured on a scale of 0 to 5. 0 being no disease. Uh, 1 being loss of the, uh, of the tail function. 2 being uh, the legs uh, are not working properly, the, the hind limbs. 3 being loss of the forelimb activity, um, alteration of activity, and so on and five being the worst, which is the death of the mouse. So, why I say that is so you can understand now this figure that I'm going to show you. Um, what this figure is, is the authors injected the mice on day zero to induce a disease. The disease severity is seen on the y-axis, and you can see the disease severity increases, and then the arrow pointing down, that's when they received stem cells. Two million lineage negative, stem cell antigen positive, bone marrow derived stem cells with no immune suppression. So uh, this is basically an injection of bone marrow derived hematopoietic stem cells, which is very interesting because usually people study mesenchymal stem cells for immune modulation, not so much study hematopoietic stem cells. Um, but anyway, so as you can see, there's a decrease in the disease severity, but in the control, there is not, not a decrease. It goes up and then goes down a little, then goes up and, and so on. So the question was, is this immune modulation? And the authors, I didn't show you the figure, but the authors demonstrated that the injected stem cells do not go into the CNS preferentially, these kind of stem cells in this model. So the next question the author said is, well, maybe they're inhibiting the immune response against the proteolipid protein that we injected to induce the disease. So as you can see in this figure, both at two weeks and at 10 weeks, if you take the mouse, euthanize the mouse, take out the spleen cells, and pure, uh, stimulate them with the PLP, that thing you use to induce the disease initially, you can see that the T cells are not proliferating as much in the groups that receive the stem cells, both at two weeks and at ten weeks, which is interesting, but it's to be expected if it's immune modulation. What is really interesting, though, is when you look at the cytokines being made, Compare on re-stimulation here, both at 2 weeks and 10 weeks, the production of interferon gamma. There's a lot more interferon gamma being made by the mice that received stem cells. Now this is kind of crazy, right? Because interferon gamma, we always associate it with inflammation. We even have a video here on, on, on the Cell Medicine Channel showing the correlation between interferon gamma production and clonotypic driver clones of MS. So, this was a paradigm shifting finding, so the investigators obviously said to themselves, well, maybe the interferon gamma is not the primary causative thing of the protection, maybe it's part of a larger process. So they started thinking, what processes are associated with interferon gamma that would be protective against multiple sclerosis? So they came up with the idea to look for the enzyme in dolamine-2,3-dioxygenase, IDO. This enzyme is found in conditions 
where the immune system tells itself to stop, temp at least temporarily. So this IDO is found in the placenta, and if you inhibit IDO, then you have immunological mediated abortion because the placenta protects the fetus from maternal immune attack, right? So um, anyway, the, the IDO, they said, let's look for it. So what they found is when you take the, um, the spleens of the mice and you look for its expression, you see higher expression basally on this figure, so without stimulation. And then also if you take them and you look to compare to control and you put interferon gamma from the outside, you see a lot more IDO in the spleen cells from the mice that were treated with the stem cells. So, then they did another experiment to show that IDO is expressed in CD11C positive cells. All this means is IDO, like we were saying before, it shuts down T cell activity, but it's expressed in a specific cell that interacts with the T cell called the dendritic cell. And CD11C is expressing it, as you can see in this figure. So basically what this means is that, yeah, indeed, they found IDO upregulated in mice that received stem cells. So two main points so far, right? One, this kind of stem cell, the hematopoietic type stem cell, uh, lineage negative, stem cell antigen positive, seems to inhibit the multiple sclerosis in the EAE model. And number two, this seems to be associated with upregulation of IDO. Now, here's a question, right? There's a lot of different associations in science. So we can sit down here and talk for many, many weeks, if not months or years, about associations. But is it functionally relevant? So what they did is, as you can see in this figure, they inhib they gave the stem cells and there was an inhibition of disease. They gave the stem cells where where there's an error. Then they gave the stem cells in this figure where it's where it's pointing down, they gave the stem cells plus the IDO inhibitor. IDO inhibitor, uh, one methyl tryptophan, basically it shuts down the activity of IDO. You can see here there's just as much disease as in control. You can see that's a control on the next slide, uh, if not even more. So what they're demonstrating is that the protection mediated by the stem cells, that protection seems to be associated with induction of IDO, and if you block IDO, then you don't have this protection anymore. 